client side versus service side. So this is the world. That's the tubes. This is the tubes. This is a server. And this is a client. So a client literally just means anyone's connected computer in like a client server relationship, right? So you're connected, they're your client, not client in the sense that we think client on the third floor. So a server sends some data through the tubes and it shows up on the client side. Then the client can pass data back through the tubes and send it back over to the server side. And that's that's literally it. That's that's our that is our circle of life. Um, so client side is like I just said, the interactions that are actually happening on your physical space on on any machine that's connected in a client server relationship. And the responsibility of the client side is is like we said, the browser just simply interprets um, those resources in that markup and turns it into something pretty and something presentable on your machine. Um, the browser itself receives input from the servers. Uh, and renders it again based on the, on the content of the markup. So you've got a bunch of stuff out there and it takes it and it turns it into this nice pretty um, pr pretty interface using static uh, languages like HTML, like CSS, like JavaScript. All right, hitting up the server side of, of the equation. This is operations, literally just operations performed by the server in a client-server relationship. So what that means is the server is responsible for taking all of those assets and assembling them in a manner that can be basically bumped over to, to the client side. Um, the server is the computer on the, the remote end of, of that connection, so it's just kind of out there somewhere and it's nebulous and, and we don't really know, know where it is. Um, but it serves up the content that is uh, consumed by, by the client side, so it, it takes that markup and it sends it over to be assimilated on the other side. Scripts are, are the things that make us, that give us the ability to communicate with um, a database. It, it compiles all these variables together and, and figures out how it needs to present them. So um, think of the programming language as one way that I understood it. it was the programming language is uh, like the secretary, right, that, that um, facilitates all the different organization of all these different files between a file cabinet, which would be your database, and, and everybody else that needs to have the, all the, the right piece of paper at the right time. Um, the programming language is the secretary that compiles all of that. So why is this an important distinction, this whole client and server side uh, distinction? Um, th and this goes back to what you were just saying about, you know, what if, what if something's going all the way to China? Well, loading a web page itself is just a series of transmissions of, da of data between a server and a client. Um, and, and the goal, optimally, is to minimize the number of transmissions that are actually happening between um, your, your server and your client, and that'll increase, decrease your page load yep. time. The more hops you have, or the more pages that you, or the more assets you have to load, uh, the longer the wait you have, and humans are incredibly impatient. Um, so we're going to touch really quickly again, on, like I said before, about on some client-side technology. So we already talked a little bit about HTML. HTML structures the content, but if HTML is the thing that's structuring the content, then there's this thing called CSS, which is stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and that is the thing that stylizes the content. It makes it pretty. It says use this font and use this color and make it this size, and and we want you to present it as a header. Um, there's also this thing called JavaScript, which is which adds interactivity. It's, it's essentially a, a rich programming language that adds interactivity, and it happens on your machine. So, um, whenever it's sending, when the server's sending you the data to compile, JavaScript will take it and add some sort of cool little interactivity to it. So, um, and then the last uh, two more, the last type of technology that everybody's pretty familiar with is is Flash. And Flash, Flash was this awesome, crazy, uh, innovative thing because it's this it's this simple, seemingly simple programming language that takes um, vectors and, and turns them into these rich interactions at a very small file size. So like we were saying about that we want the, the fewest number of transmissions possible going between the client and server. Well, Flash, Flash facilitates that in a big way because it allows you to take something that looks like it's huge and big, and, but actually in reality, because that's vector art, it's all truncated into a pretty, pretty decently small file size. So all right, so there's this hybrid thing called Sweet. Ajax. Yeah, let me uh, briefly just say there's a lot of ambiguity around AJAX. We're not trying to get too deep on this. I just want to point out what AJAX is and what it is not. AJAX is not Flash, although it's a lot like Flash. Okay? AJAX is actually the symbiotic relationship between a client side and a server side connection. Okay? So when you hit uh, Gmail, is a great example of this. Every time you see that little loading thing up in the upper right hand corner, like it's re you know refreshing the page. That is AJAX, okay? It is an asynchronous request to the server, not to be confused with asynchronous request, and what those mean basically is that it doesn't hijack your phone. 
this, okay? So you don't have to reload the whole page in order to get new data off the server. It's actually using JavaScript, which is a client-side technology, to make a request to the server, get data, send it back, and plug it into the page without ever preventing you from doing other stuff on the page. So you know when you click a link and it takes like 30 seconds for the page to refresh and rebuild before you can do anything else, Ajax is the answer to that. Ajax makes these requests behind the scenes and you're not aware of them and so you never lose focus. Like you can always continue interacting with elements on the page. Okay, so front end versus back end. This is one of my favorite slides. What is front end? What happens in the front side of your browser? Um, and what is back end? What happens on the server side of your browser? And so we use those terms a lot, so I want to make sure that you guys have, have the understanding of what that distinction is. And that kind of draws a parallel to the difference between um, to a degree, static and dynamic. So static is uh, a website that has no back end. Um, it's, it's this simple, very basic level, one plus one is always two and that will never change, right? And one is always equal to one in that equation. Does that make sense? Right. This is the difference between regular math, like one plus one equals two, and algebra, which is x plus y equals z. Right. That's <laughs> right, right. So, so yeah, this is the difference. The difference being, you know, in dynamic websites we're evaluating a whole series of variables and we're giving you some output based on those variables, whereas static never changes. So, dynamic leverage uh, backend code again to determine what's being displayed on the page. And dynamic code means it's a bunch of if-then statements. If I do this, then this is going to do this. Um, and it rapidly facilitates the changing, the updating of content on a page, and that's the most valuable thing to us and to our clients, and, and why we put so much emphasis on content management and Drupal and things like that. Um, so, if you build it, they will come. So static websites, if you build it and you build it once, and that's the only time you can build it, and, and it's done, right? Dynamic websites um, are built and can be repurposed over and over and over again. So um, that leads us into web software systems, which is which is turning that um, set of dynamic code into an actual software system that can be repurposed, like, like Drupal, like WordPress, like, like Joomla. Um, and these are product or service-based things, like service-based in terms of like e-commerce or event management or online banking, um, where it's using some sort of dynamic co combination and gathering variables and looking at databases and then presenting you with a different output every single time. Um, so content management system, CMS, we just talked about that, like, like Drupal. Yep. And I think until that's good. next time, yep. browsers, a case study. So next time we're going to look at the history of browser wars, what they do, what they do not do, and why they are the bane of Taylor's existence. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>